Alright guys, we're back for part 2 of my Let's Play on uh, Elite Dangerous. Now this is a launch day. Uh, I just did a 40 minute video. This is the this will be the second part of it. Now, in the last video I mentioned uh, certain key binds and I was supposed to go over them but I forgot twice actually to do that. So I'm going to do that now. Yep. If you press escape to go into the menu, then click on options and controls. Now I realise a lot of you will be using joysticks but a lot of people will be using keyboard and mouse as well, yeah? So, it's down here, if you, if you come down to your flight throttle, you've got a bunch of stuff that says set speed to minus 100 to set speed to 100. Make sure that you're in the, the plus ones and not the, the, the negative ones, because I've made that mistake a few times. Right. The ones I went over were set speed to zero, which is my X key, I think that's the default, and set speed to 75%, uh, which I've got as my down arrow and also my tilde key, which is my key next to my one on my keyboard. Uh, I use set speed to zero for landing, you can use it when you get interdicted to throttle down and submit and you can also use it well just just as you start your hyperspace jump and if you, if you press set speed to zero during hyperspace then you will come to a full stop instead of crashing into the star uh, once you get there. Set speed to 75% is used on approach, uh, once you, you, your countdown gets to about 8 seconds, if you hit set speed to 75% you should, you should get the perfect approach. This works in, on orbitals, it works on, I believe it works on ships as well. It works on stuff like unidentified signal sources. Basically, this should give you the perfect approach to any object, assuming it's not moving too fast, I think. Um, I believe that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, M for the map as well. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, we went over F1 and F2 for... Where are we? There's an awful lot, isn't there? Right, target panel and system panel, I changed to F1 and F2. I mean, if you've got a joystick, you can put these on, on it, if you've got buttons and stuff like that, yeah? Um, and the last one I talked about was open the galaxy map, which I don't believe has got a key bind, but if you key bind that to M, it'll save you a lot of time than constantly going into the, you know, the navigation menu, just so you can bring up the map. Right, so, that's that out of the way. Now, there wasn't that much in the bulletin board, when I got here, so I took a little break, uh, so let's see what's here now, like I said, every five minutes, new missions appear, right, so if you look at up at the top here, it's at 1557, um, so once that reaches 16, four o'clock, new missions, a few new missions should appear here, and also some will go away, yeah, right, now this is quite an interesting one, caught in a moment, I have to find a black box. So this is what these unidentified signal sources are all about, right? They want me to find a black box in this place called Irise, uh, Alrise Sector JHVB24. It pays very well, 13,500 credits, but it's considered illegal. So I need to basically find the box and sneak it back uh, in, in, into this, uh, this orbital. Uh, now, here's another one looking for a black box. Right. Activity considered illegal. What well, I'm now gonna do these, right? Because and there's another one for rebel transmissions. Right, these missions are good. They give you a uh, reputation and they pay very well. The, the risk is they are considered illegal, right? But I'm gonna accept this one. So that was for a black box. Now there was another one for a black box, and this is really what you want to see. When you get multiples like this, this is great. So I'm gonna accept that. That's me now, I'm looking for two black boxes now, and uh, I'm going to take this final one, because these are all the same, these unidentified signal sources, once you enter these, you've got a chance of finding stuff like rebel transmissions, black boxes and stuff like that, so it's purely random, I'm pretty sure about that, uh, or it was at least. So I'm going to take those three and I'm going to go out there hunting these down. Looking at this, palladium for 45,000 credits, if I find two palladium, now two palladium is going to cost about 18, 19,000 credits probably, yeah, but the rewards are double that and more. Um, I do need to find it, but that shouldn't be too difficult to do in eight and a half hours. Basically speaking, as soon as I get to about 20, plus thousand, this is a double your money type thing if I can find this palladium, so I am going to accept this mission, even though I'm not going to do it right now. 
Right, what else? I think that's probably enough. It's always handy, right? If you go into your contacts menu here on your left, sometimes there is a, a black market. Now, these goods that I find, these black boxes and stuff, if I get surplus of those, I can sell them in the black market. And they're worth about 2,000 credits each in, in some cases. Yeah, So it's worth checking here to find where black markets are. If you find a black market somewhere, write it down in a notepad so that you know, if you, if you ever find yourself in... You know, carrying a lot of illegal goods. I'm sure you're not going to be like that, obviously, yeah. But if you do find yourself carrying a lot of illegal goods, uh, you, you can come and sell them at a black market. Just be aware that if you get caught carrying them, you can, you're pretty sure that you're going to be penalised pretty heavily. Uh, right. Now, let's have a look at these properly. Even though it says two different sectors, I'm willing to bet that I will find both of these black boxes in the same sector. So I'm going to put that to the test. Yakabu guy, is this where I am, Yakabu guy? I think this is where I came to, wasn't it? It was indeed. Right, so I'm actually here right now, in this Yakabu guy place. So, it wants me to find a, a black box from here. So I'm just going to fly around in this system looking for these black boxes. So, just launch. I'm playing in open mode again, so there's always a chance of running into a player and, you know, regretting doing that, but... It is launch day, so we might as well see how it's going. Ship right. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to find black boxes in normal, you know, at normal speed. Or, or these signal sources at normal speed. So you do need to... Get far away enough from the station again and then go into your system drive, which is the same as your... As long as you don't have anything targeted, right, in your navigation, as long as you don't have another system targeted, which I don't, if I press my hyperspace key, then I, I will just go into what, what most people call the system drive. There is a keybind for it separately, yeah, but this is the way that I do it. Just make sure you don't have another system targeted. Right, so that's me in the system drive. I'm going to fly around looking for these boxes. Now, I think the best way to do it is, if you've got your head look or your mouse look on, you can look around, you get more space, uh, you know, more blank area to look at. Also, if you go into your contacts, they do appear, they do appear on this list once you get within a certain range. I'm just going to fly around normally looking for them. Um, that's a planet. Uh, I use my middle mouse button to set up my head look, right? So if I press my middle mouse button, I can then look around. That's a spaceship. You can tell by the little blue color. Um, you need to set that up in your options again, right? So, I'll just come to a full stop. Options. Controls. Uh, I've also got show mouse widget on. That's what the little uh, triangle thing is. Mouse head look is on for me. So if that's off, you need to put that to on. And uh, you can change the sensitivity. If you find that you're, you're flying all over the place when, when you're using it, put the sensitivity down a bit. And I think it's right down near the bottom. Where are we? Yeah, head look mode. You want the default state to off. Head look mode to accumulate. And uh, basically speaking, I, I should now be able to toggle. I can now toggle between... That's what I want. Here's a signal source. Right, come to full stop. I can now toggle between head look and, and on and off simply by pressing my middle mouse button. Yeah, you could, that can be a, a button on your joystick, obviously. Right, now, like I said, it appears that these, um, si sorry, the signal sources appear in your navigation tab, not your contacts tab, right? So, there it is there. I've got it locked on my destination. 
I know it's behind me. Right, so there it is. Now, if I use my set speed to 75% after I target it, set speed to 75%, I will get the perfect speed. The perfect approach towards it. I've overrun it. I made a mistake, I've overrun it. Because I was already very close to it. Uh, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, I'll find another one though. So one of the annoying things about the game is, this will now be gone. Right? Even though it was right next to me, this will now be gone. Uh, so, so I now need to fly around and find another one. Right, there we go. Make sure you've got it targeted, right? Now, like I said, you can see that see the timer is it's counting all the way up here because I set my speed to zero just to slow right down. Now, what I'm going to do is move towards it until this, it gets down to eight seconds again. And then I'm going to press set speed to 75%. Get ready with my J key because that's what you use again. In order to go to these signal sources, you need to come out of you know your system drive. Right, so I'm just creeping forward towards it. There's another one there. Like I said, that will be gone. As soon as I'm finished with this one, that, uh, that one will be gone. So you need to fly around and look for more. Almost at one megameter. I'm going to press my J key. As soon as safe disengage comes up. Right. Now, you enter your own sort of little instance here. And this isn't good, right? Because there's a bunch of ships in here. And generally speaking, that can be bad. I don't want to be here, right? So I'm just going to turn and run. I think they'll be picking on somebody else. Uh, some other ship. Probably that hauler, yeah? And once they're finished with it, they'll come after you. So... Yeah, don't worry, this scan doesn't hurt, yeah. You know what does hurt, though. Now, as you can see, my, I'm charging very slowly in my frame shift drive because there's a larger ship nearby and it is stopping me from getting away fast. Uh, but I got out of distance. As soon as you get three kilometers away from that, one, you're fine. When you, see, and when you see one of these uh, signal sources, just turn and run. so many planets around here that it's hard to tell what's a signal source and what's a planet. Right. I mean, normally the planets are going to be on the orbit lines, yeah, so you could avoid them that way, but I, I also believe that you're more likely to run into signal sources around there. That's that same planet. This is another good uh, good thing for having set speed to zero, because as soon as you see one on the horizon, just press your set speed to zero so you don't run way past it. The thing to remember is these things are inherently random. Uh, as you saw there, I ran into an encounter with ships that would have attacked me and would have killed me you know, had I not got out of them. Uh, but that could also have been the black box, yeah? So you've really got to just fly around these until... until you find what you're looking for. Right, so there's one there. So it's fingers crossed every time you come to one of these. Yeah? That's another two. Right, so disengage. Generally speaking, you're looking for white things, not this. 
Right. So this is just some guy... flying around doing nothing much, yeah? I'm not quite sure. Maybe if you follow him, some, you, you eventually come to something. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to... I'm just going to jump out again. I wonder if actually flying around with this navigation map on is the best way. Yeah, it probably is, right? Because I saw there an unidentified signal source. So that may well be the better way to do it. And sometimes other ships come in and out of these as well, but I'm not really sure what that means. Oh, come on. I'm really not getting an awful lot of luck here. This could be bad. Now you're going to see me running. And what I'm doing is, I'm doing, it's not a barrel roll, but it's kind of like a barrel roll by... Basically, rolling to my right and thrusting and yawing at the same time. Uh, and also boosting as soon as boosts come up. Right. Let's pray that this is it this time. Uh, looks like my prayers are not being answered today. wants to discuss a proposal, right? This could be interesting anyway. Check your transactions tab. Right, now my contract has been updated. And instead of delivering this palladium that they want me to, to get back to the place that, that first offered me the contract, they now want me to deliver it elsewhere. Right? So it's quite interesting. I'll consider that. I don't have to do that yet. I can make up my mind on that. At the rate this is going, I probably won't even find any palladium because I'll be looking for unidentified signal sources for the next eight hours. So this must be what, number five? My, my fifth signal source and I haven't found any... Uh, any artifacts or any transmissions or black boxes or anything like that. So let's not bother praying this time. We'll just uh, we'll just see how it goes. It's kind of strange how you see so many of them all together, yeah? I mean, that may mean something. Right, this is what we're looking for. White boxes. I'll come to full stop. And it's a black box. So it's black boxes we're looking for, not white ones. Right, the first thing you need to do now, open your cargo hatch. That's the home key on the keyboard. And as you can see, you've now got a cross here. And you just want to creep forward. I find that 14 is good. Uh, and you can even slow down by using your forward and backward thrusters, but that's a little bit more advanced. But to start with, I mean, I'm absolutely hopeless at this ca capturing cargo. I've, I've ruined so many canisters. You know, if, if it crashes into you, then there's a good chance you're going to lose it. <laughs> so, uh, just try and keep it in the center. And you fly towards it. It moves it, it moves right at the very end. That's where it moves the most. You want it sort of un under your ship, yeah? You're not flying directly towards it because your cargo scoop's at the bottom of your ship, yeah? 
So there we go. Now, you can't go into your frame shift drive or your system drive until you put your cargo scoop away, yeah? So we'll press home again. I'm going to have a look for another one before I go back. Maybe I'll go on a roll now that I've found one, yeah? <laughs> Hope is the last thing to go, that's what they say, isn't it? Right. right I'm not got I don't want to spend forever doing this, obviously, yeah, but I'm getting a little bit greedy because I've got so many of them. Yeah, I've got three here that I can basically pick up. I've already found one. And now I'm looking for another two. The reason it's I'm getting greedy is because the money is great for this. This could this is if I find all three of these before I fly back, then I could almost start thinking about buying a new ship. It's way faster than trading and it's probably a lot faster than doing, like, you know, cargo missions, hauler missions as well. I've been at this for mm, 20, 25 minutes maybe. And once again, another one appears right behind it. Another random shot out in the middle of nowhere. Now, I'm going to do one more before I head back. And once again, another one appears nearby. Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe this does mean something, yeah? Because what's the chances of that happening every time? Well, to be fair, it is actually quite far away, yeah? Right, so final one. Oh look, another one. <laughs> it's even closer. And that's pretty bizarre as well, yeah? One's 146 light seconds away, and this one that's far closer only came into view much later. Yeah, so that may mean something. And another one. Yeah, it'll be interesting if somebody can figure that, all that out, yeah? And we've got more ships. Right, well that's enough of that. I'm just going to head back and cash in one of these black boxes. Maybe do another one if I see it on the way. <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding, I won't. Uh, I think that's more than enough of that. I think if you're really bored on a Sunday or something like that, you can quite happily, you know, hunt these around. If it's, it's pretty mindless, yeah? Um, so it's not the most exciting part of the game, but I had to cover it at some point. Early on in the game, you get lucky. I mean, I could easily have been coming out of this with 45,000 or something like that, yeah? Which would have been great. That's... You see, that's you almost on your way to your next ship or or a really good upgrade for your Sidewinder. Right. I'm going to jump out here and I'm going to come to a full stop. Because it's really worth mentioning that if you go into your cargo panel, you can see that this black box is marked as stolen, 
right? Now, remember it said that this is an illegal mission. This is why anything you find out there is probably going to be stolen. Now, you can actually jettison your own stuff. As soon as you jettison it, that's marked as stolen. If you abandon it, it won't be marked as stolen, yeah? But everything else you find out there is likely going to be marked as stolen. So that means when you when you try to land at one of the other orbitals, there's a very good chance that you're going to get scanned by the system security. And that's pretty bad because if that happens then you, you get fined. And if you don't pay your fines then you end up with a bounty. Uh, and, and then that's when they start shooting at you, yeah? I'm putting my throttle to the blue zone before I do a loop because that makes me loop much faster, yeah? And it slows me down, which is exactly what I want to do. And just roll around. Get ready to set speed to zero. Right. Now, check out the bulletin board. One of them's worth 13,600. The other one's worth 14,130. Now, the difference in these is probably due to the time. Yeah, I've got 2 hours and 10 minutes to deliver this one. And it's like I said, remember at the start I said, I believe that you can find them at the same in the same place. Yeah, that's just correct, right? Because even though... I, I found this black box here in the se in the sector that I'm in. It's also going to let me complete this one, yeah? So had I found two black boxes out there, then I would have been able to complete both of these these missions. Seeing as the Yak this uh, Yakabugai one is the one that's worth 14,000, so I'm definitely going to want to, to cash that one in first. It's got less time left in it, it's worth more, so I'm going to give the cargo for that. Again, you got all this mission summary. Not exactly sure exactly what it means. Right, I'm starting to get more missions now for killing pirates and stuff like that. Uh, LHS 3447, that's the place we don't want to go to. I'll have a little think about what I'm going to do next. Let's see, I've got an hour. The thing about these missions is, right, these actually count down in real time. So... If I don't complete this Rebel Transmissions one, and if I don't complete this Black Box one, I'm probably going to get a penalty uh, later on. I won't get fined or anything like that. There's no fine for it, but I'll, I'll maybe get a, a, a reputation penalty for not completing those. So you do need to be careful. You know, When you take these, try and make sure that you actually get them done. Uh, the penalty's not going to be huge, and you maybe don't even care about it that much, in all honesty. But it's worth noting that you know, these do count down in real time, so if I don't complete these within the next couple of hours, you know, I'm basically going to fail, I'm, I'm going to fail the missions. I'll have a little break there. I, I'm sorry about this one, it wasn't exactly the most exciting uh, episode that you're ever going to see, but it had to be done at some point. I, I could have got lucky, I could be sitting now on, you know, about 50, 60,000, a little bit more luck. As it was, I got one decent uh, signal source out of seven or eight that I tried. That's just the way, you know, that's just the luck of the draw regarding these unidentified signal sources. You can decide if this is the sort of gameplay you want or not. Uh, it's a bit like playing roulette. Uh, again, I would do it one day and I, and I couldn't be bothered doing it on another day. The only reason I did it here is because this is these were the best missions to take at the time. I probably wouldn't have made 15,000 or 14,000 doing it like normal missions uh, around here. Or, or maybe I would have done, yeah, but you just never know. I certainly would not have made about 50,000, which is what the potential was for me to make here. Right, so I'll see you in episode three. Uh, thanks for watching.